What is up guys, this is Kino back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you of course the Evolution X-ROM and I have been daily driving it for months now and I have updated to several builds of this ROM. Currently I'm on the latest one that is the 13th November 2024 build and here this is of course based on the latest security patch of November 1st 2024. Here up top you will see the Evolution X logo and the version of Evolution X is 9.6. Of course you will still get the Easter egg and stuff of Evolution X. And here we have the Android version as Android 14, not Android 15 quite right now, but hopefully the Android 15 update we will get in a couple of months, I guess. Or I gotta say that daily driving of this particular ROM has been really one of the best experiences on this device. And, and here, if in the system update section, I go to this system updater, of course, this is the latest update as of today. In the gestures and stuff, we still have all the gestures like the back tap and stuff, all these things. If I just do this back tap, as you can see, shows quick tap rejected and toggle flashlight option and stuff. Everything is working fine with the back tap, as you can see. Just disable this one. We do have the quickly open camera and stuff with the power button and we have the navigation mode. In the settings of it, if I just go into it, we have the navigation hint, back gesture animation, haptic and we have the IMA space customization, pill length and radius customization. We have the back gesture height swipe to invoke assistant. All those things are working fine. As you can see, the Gemini and here also just holding on this pill bar, it will bring you that circle to search kind of thing. It is totally working fine. No need to worry about it. Hold handle to search. That is the option. And we have the left edge, right edge customization as well. Two button and three button navigation is of course there. One handed mode two is working fine. We have the double tap to check phone as well. Then we have the lift to check phone as well. It is totally working fine. Let me just show you quickly. I just turned off the screen. And if I just pick it up on my hand, as you can see, it shows the ambient display. And let me show you one more time. The screen is off. And I put the device on the desk and pick it up. As you can see, the pickup gesture is totally working fine. Double tap to wake, it's also working fine. And we have the press and hold power button action customization. We have the double tap to check phone as well. And we also have the swipe to take screenshot. That too is working fine. Share, edit, delete, Google lens, and even the capture mode feature is there. We have the prevent ringing, all these things. And we have the USB configuration. You can set it to file transfer for convenience. In the buttons, we also have the edge long swipe action and stuff. If you want to use those, we have the end call, long press, power button, toggle, torch. We have the wake device, control, playback, reorient, show panel on the left side, click to take version screenshot. All these options are here. But in the settings panel, the good thing is there is this backup or copy data option. So you can copy your previous data or you can backup your data from right here to your Google Cloud. And one thing I have to mention here is for a long time, the auto brightness used to not work. Currently, the brightness a little bit much because I have increased it. And if I just turn on this auto brightness, as you can see, the brightness actually goes down depending on your ambient lighting. Now, in the home screen, of course, it has the pixel launcher. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page and swiping up will get to the app drawer. Swiping down will get to the notification and quick setting panel. And the widgets are also working fine. The Bluetooth battery widget and stuff, everything is working fine. Just look at the animation, how smooth they are everywhere. Overall, you are getting much, much more smooth animation everywhere. Also, one more thing is that I think this was an Android 15 feature, not really sure. Like you can actually have the app pair saved. Like if I open YouTube and X and right now from the recent panel, I go here and tap on split screen, then select two apps on split screen. Now, if I go into the recent panel, of course, these two apps are together. And right now I can do this save pair option. And once I do that, as you can see, the apps pair has been saved. And if I open this, it will open YouTube and Twitter together. So yes, save app PR option currently, it's working totally fine here. No need to worry, you can open, of course, normal apps and then, of course, you can open separate apps together. In the quick setting panel, these are the toggles you will get and I have added these amount of toggles. There is FPS info and stuff, so you can see your mobiles or phone screens FPS all the time. Of course, it's running on 120 hertz, no issues. And there is the screen recording and stuff, let me show you. There is entire screen or a single app option, then there is the high quality, medium or low quality settings for the screen recording. We have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. Show touches option and the other options are there for the screen recording and it is working totally fine. We have the Bluetooth kind of status right here and it will show you the Bluetooth battery and stuff in the quick setting panel as well. Here, as you can see, we also have the dark theme. I have been using it with a pitch black option and this is how it looks like with the pitch black. There is night light and stuff and you can edit and add even more toggles if you'd like to from the more settings. Just notice how many toggles are there. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, we are getting the Poco camera here and with this Poco camera, let me tell you that everything is perfectly stable in my opinion. And there is the AI camera and stuff, macro and, and the time burst, etc. options are there. Swiping up will get you even more options like the panorama, vlog or short film. Then we have the long exposure, AI watermark, all these things. 
there is the 0.6x or ultra wide angle lens than the normal wide lens and we have the 2x zooming option and in terms of the front camera let me show you yes the front camera is also working totally fine no issues with it with the front camera even in the portrait mode with our front camera the bokeh and stuff it's totally fine i'll give you some samples here in the video settings with the rear camera you can go up to 4k and even there is the 30 fps option there is no 60 fps 4k with the rear camera at least that's how it is as of now but with 1080p you can go up to 60 fps and even with the, with the front camera you can go up to 60 fps with 1080p of course in the documents mode we have the enhanced stuff and we have the pro mode option you can shoot pro mode videos or photos whatever you want to but up to 4k and 30 fps there is night mode there is 64 megapixel mode all these things should be working fine also you can install the gcam that i am using for a long time and i will actually list this gcam in the description do not worry also again the samples and stuff will be on the screen and in the app settings you will still get the cloned app so you can use two accounts of whatsapp or facebook whatever you want to from here so dual apps are working then we have the game space as well so you can add any game right here and you can play those games with the overlay and stuff there is the assistant customization then there is a cloud media app kind of customization in the notifications we still have the bubble kind of thing and we have the flash notification option as well you can use it differently if you would like to let's talk about battery settings this is how it looks like we have the charging control but if you enable that your fast charging speeds will drop actually so be careful about that we have the battery information right here and there it also shows the cycle count that's really nice but my device has gone through a lot of cycles like 645 cycles i have on this original battery and we have the temperature and stuff the voltage of battery everything and we have the thermal profiles as well so you can set per apps thermal profile to benchmark or performance i have selected that for benchmark apps now let's talk about the battery life that i have tested with the aku battery app and with that the screen on time all these are estimated numbers but just look at the screen on time here it shows about 8 hours and 20 minutes that's a huge amount of screen on time i have to say here and with the screen off it shows about 48 hours so you can say two days worth of usage you will get of like screen off or standby time usage and the combined use here it shows about 14 hours or 15 hours for me because i'm a heavy user guys and in the health section we have the battery health estimated at about 86 percent for me and even the fast charging speeds and stuff everything is totally fine no need to worry about fast charging speeds here 67 watt fast charging is working flawlessly in terms of volume panel this is how it looks like you can expand the volume panel from here and you can even expand or like change the output device the bluetooth headset and speakers etc or even bluetooth speakers you can switch that from right here the media kind of panel and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here and in terms of the power menu let me show you this is how it looks like there is the advanced restart i have enabled that and i can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here let's talk about the basic stuff yes it passes the safety net test and stuff all these things and banking apps will be working totally fine no need to worry about it i have been using banking apps i didn't face any issues just make sure just delete the twrp or orange box folder from your internal storage that will make your banking apps working flawlessly most of the credit card apps are working fine the drm info here shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos internet p the ia blaster here works flawlessly in terms of google photos backup yes this one supports the pixel kind of unlimited photos and videos backup so that's really nice and also in google play store it shows device is certified of course in the display settings we still have the adaptive and auto brightness we have the screen time mode up to 30 minutes with screen attention there is a display size and text kind of customization and we have the dpi then the night light the live display kind of customization color calibration options are there reading mode is there we have the colors i have been using it with the saturated option you can use it with other options too peak refresh rate and stuff you can change you can set it to up to 90 hertz if you'd like to we have the minimum refresh rate as well changing option we have the low power refresh rate here also and we have the full screen apps the display cutout option is there then we have the double app to wake and sleep we have the wake up on plug per app refresh rate is also there you can set it to 60 or 120 hertz in terms of security this is how it looks like in the device unlock settings we have these kind of settings we have the fingerprint and face unlock i have been using it for the fingerprint option but before that let me show you the more settings here also if you just scroll down we have the high developer status option so if some apps are working weirdly or not working if if you have the developer option turned on you can just put that app right here it will work flawlessly even if you have developer option turned on there is also this tip protection right now so you can turn this on if you'd like to and here if someone snatches your phone or something this will secure your phone i guess so tip protection right now is there i think this was an android 15 feature but right now it's here also there is an app lock and stuff i have locked particular apps i'll show you that 
But first, let me show you the normal fingerprint scanner speed. And I just double tapped the device to lock. And pick up gesture again, it's working flawlessly. And tapping on the fingerprint scanner, it just straight up unlocks, no issues. Let me show you a couple of times. Here also, as you can see, the fingerprint scanner, it's just blazing fast, no problems whatsoever. And even if I turn on the always on display, always on display looks super good. And yeah, pretty much unlocks flawlessly, no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner. Let me show you how the app lock looks like. If you open a lock tab, this is how the UI will look. We have this touch, the fingerprint sensor and unlock telegram. And right now, if I just tap on the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it's straight up unlocks. So yes, app lock and stuff, everything is working flawlessly, no issues. By the way, if you are wondering about the lock screen clock styles, yes, you can change that from the lock screen clocks of wallpapers and styles. And these are the Android 14 kind of clock styles that you can choose from and you can choose which one you like to. By the way, the wallpaper that I'm using, it's from the SpaceX handle and we have the more wallpapers right here and there are a huge amount of really good wallpapers right out of the box in this room and living universe or live wallpapers are there. I have this Liverpool Ipsy if you're a FIFA fan or something and more FIFA wallpapers are there, I guess. And we have the community lens kind of stuff. We have the curated culture, all these things. And yeah, pretty much a huge amount of options are there in terms of the stock wallpapers in this room. There is also the papers app which, where you get the evolution X kind of wallpapers. Lock screen shortcuts, it's true, you can customize from here. And in the home screen, in the wallpapers and styles, we have the themed icons. Then the app grid also you can customize up to 5x5. Five five. Face unlock nowadays, it's not that interesting in my opinion because it's straight up unlocks. But let me just set it up. Just complete the setup of the face unlock. And if I just go here, it shows always record confirmation. Skip lock screen option is there. And right now. If I just double tap to sleep and double tap to wake, as you can see, straight up unlocks. Nothing much and yeah, pretty much very fast unlocking speed. I'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner, by the way. And as you can see, I point the device towards my face and it unlocks. Even app lock should work with the face unlock. And as you can see, it does. If I open test to website, yes, it shows that the FPS goes up to 100 plus FPS. Here, it doesn't show exactly 120 Hertz for some reason, but yeah, overall, I feel the whole UI, it's totally running at 120 Hz that I can totally feel everything. It's buttery smooth, no problems while switching apps, even app pair opening option and stuff, all these things. And yeah, just notice the app launching speed and swapping between the apps. No issues. You can rescale them if you'd like to from right here. All those things are possible here. No issues that I have faced and overall opening apps like normally or opening Instagram, etc. All these things. It's pretty fast experience. And in the Reels section, let me just go into it here. Just notice how fast you can scroll through. Well, it's depending on my Wi-Fi speed, I guess. But yeah, overall, I didn't face any kind of issue at all. Everywhere in heavier tasks like in Instagram or stuff like that, or even in YouTube, the scrolling and stuff, everything, it's just buttery smooth experience. No issues whatsoever that you will face. And here are the Android Geekbench score with a CPU stress test and other benchmarks on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. Now talking about customizations, of course, this ROM has still an amazing amount of customizations. Just look at that. I'm going to give you a glimpse of this and everywhere you will have multiple different customizations. Like just notice the Wi-Fi icon styles, signal icon styles, all these things are still present and huge, huge amount of icon customization and other stuff are present. We have the boot animation customizations as well. Plethora of options that you can choose from just for the boot animation also. So yeah, pretty much everywhere you will get huge amount of customization. Just look at this. I'm just giving you a glimpse. I'm not going to show you each and everything. I have showed you this multiple like lakhs of times. So I'm not going to show you everything. We have the island notification stuff. We have the gestures. We have the power menu customization right here. And there is the secure lock screen stuff where let me show you in the lock screen. I cannot access the power menu at all. As you can see in the quick setting panel, if I go in the power menu, as you can see, it's just totally black. It doesn't give me option to actually even switch off the phone or something. It will only restart if I just keep pressing the power button. But I cannot get into the like power menu if I don't unlock the device. So this is a really secure thing. For that, you just go into the power menu, just enable this show on secure lock screen, just turn it off. Then from the quick setting panel, just enable this hide on secure lock screen and this secure quick setting tiles, a really good privacy kind of feature. In the buttons, we have this invert layout and stuff. In the miscellaneous, we have the component spoofing and there you will get the Google photo spoof and stuff. And we have the play integrity fix. All these things are there. We have the USB configuration for file transfer. I have selected that. Hide developer option is there also. We have the no restrict of storage and ignore wallpaper dimming, unlimited screen recording, all those things. Hide screen capture status, and we have the allow application downgrade, ignore window secret flags, all these options are present. 
so these are all the customizations which are present and it's a huge huge amount of customization guys i have to say but overall even with all this customization i have to say like the evolution x rom is definitely one of the best roms out there that i have tested and i have been really driving this rom for months now because it gives me one of the best stable experiences on the poco a5 and even devices like the k20 pro works rock solid on this rom so huge thanks to the developer for developing really this amazing amount of stability in this particular ROM. Of course, Volte calling and stuff, and even the 5G while calling, it's actually working. As you can see, I placed a call. Right now, I have 5G turned on, and here, as you can see, it's calling, and you can also have this BCR, and it records all the calls if you just turn it on. So yes, all these things are working totally fine, and you can record normally also. This is a Google dialer, but you don't need it. The BCR works flawlessly here, and even the 5G speeds and stuff, everything works flawlessly. As you can see, it goes above, 700 800 plus mbps in my area so yeah 5g speeds and stuff everything is working flawlessly here so thank you so much for watching this video guys hopefully i could give you the overall experience that i'm getting from this latest evolution x rom the version 9.6 on the poco a5 and i feel this is definitely one of the best like daily drivable customization one of the best daily drivable custom roms out there for the poco a5 and even the k20 pro i have tested that i have been testing that i'll make a separate video i guess for that also but yeah definitely give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the overall custom rom experience right now on the poco a5 in november 2024 i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now